Hello techies! Welcome to our brand new video series focused on helping you get the most of your experiences in life. Before we start the video, let's know about Uptalk. Uptalk is a live, interactive platform for software training, furnishing robust personalities who could take on universal business platforms. Similarly, if we go for, let's say, for third-party payroll right. What about this one? ADP Payforce. Is it a generic one or a specific instrument right? It is a specific ADP Payforce for the Payforce service. Right. It is for only for the ADP Payforce application. But what about this one payroll interface? or maybe Payroll Effective Change Interface. How about these two? Does it have a name? Payroll Interface or Payroll Effective Change Interface? Not for a specific end system, right? It is more generic. So this is a PI, this is the PG, if you, if you may have heard about it, a PG or a PI, these are payroll integrations, payroll interfaces. Let me show you a few more. What about let's say for, for, even for XTM? Let's look at a few. ACAAAACA, Information Returns 2020. ACA Information Returns 2021 What is the ACA? You will from the U.S. What is the ACA? Affordable Care Act Obamacare also to the Obamacare right. So AC, A if you are to file the returns as for the specific requirements for that particular year. So you can choose this. So what is this? Is this an end-to-end -end connector or is it mostly like A, a generic connector? A, C, A information return specific one right. It's specific for A, C, A for the Affordable Care Act, and that's for a particular year right. Because there may have been changes over the years 18, 19, 21. There may have we have been different changes that have happened in terms of information that is required. So this is a specific end-to-end -end connector right. Absolutely. It's an end-to-end -end connector. But what about this one? A core connector for, let's say, locations. A core connector locations. Is it a generic end-to-end -end connector or mostly? I mean, is it an end-to-end -end connector or a generic connector? That's a generic one, right? It says, core connector. So whenever we see core connectors, we know for sure that these are mostly the generic connectors, right? There's not anything, anything, any specific, whatever. This one e-verify. That's an end-to-end -end right because it is for specific e-verify, employment verification, background checks, e-verify. It is a specific end-to-end -end connector. So you see that there are different and the next a higher inbound, next a higher provisioning. It's a specific for next a Kronos right. LinkedIn. Refer us how good is the application. LinkedIn. Refer us again. It is specific for a named third party application or service right. Octa. Octa worker. It is for SSOs a single sign on. 
So this is specific for that particular view, for the particular named third-party application or service right. So this is already created for us. We don't have to worry too much about this. These are end-to-end -end connectors. Phase 4. Phase 4. Chatter work feeds sing. These are all end-to-end -end connectors. All done for us, right? So what we are going to do is we're not going to use end-to-end -end connectors because they are very simple and much simpler than our end-level connectors. So we are going to use Core Connector Worker. What's really am I writing? So Core Connector Worker write. I'll search with that. Core Connector Worker is the name of the template. All right, I have to give a name, just one second. All right, let's give it a name in WW. And what is the template that we are using? Core Connector Worker. So we typically give it as CCW. So if we specify CCW, that means we know that this is going to be a Core Connector Worker, right? without even opening the integration. I mean, I can tell this is going to be a core connector worker. All right, let me not. Let me not use a hyphen, because we are using a space anyway. I and WWCCW, let's give a name, new, hire, or worker, new hires, or maybe new hires outbound, right. A core connector is outbound integration. It gets the information work from Workday and sends it to an external system. So it's going to be a higher outbound kind of integration. So now let's click on OK. So any integration, any package integration, will show up like this. It will have a lot of integration services that we have to select. You have the option to enable all services right, but we typically don't do that. Here in the there is a huge list of services. If you can see, some of these services are marked as optional. Some are already enabled right. Some are already enabled. So what we can do is we, if the ones which are already enabled, we don't have any option to like, disable that because these are required by the connector to work. Now the other ones, like Effective Stack Performance Law, BS, Data Initialization, etc. This will be enabled if you enable the Data Initialization Service. If you do that and you click on that, then only it will be enabled, but not now. I am not doing the TIS as of now, the Data Initialization Service. But now, if you look at the rest of it, there are some sections, some data section, like Personal Data Section Fields. Status, Data Section, Worker Position, Data Worker Contract, Data Worker, Leave of Absence Compensation, ID Related Person. So it is not as simple and straightforward as selecting the fields in, in your report. These, these fields are grouped together into what we call as data sections. If you want those fields, you have to enable that data section. Let's look at our fields that we want one more time. So this first time, last time, gender manager status, they look to be personal data. Right. They look like personal data. 
and even email address looks like personal data. Higher date may be personal data, or it may be more to do with the position of the worker. Business title may be related to the job or may be with the position. Again, worker type annual pay most likely relates to the compensation. Correct. So that is what we are going to select here. If we are not sure where these fields are going to be, especially if you are new to this, then it makes sense to select all the data section right. Select all the data sections, not an issue. And then fine tune it depending on where you actually see the information. Right, let me just enable everything. And then what we are going to do is, we may let me click on OK for the time being. Let me click on OK. So it gives an error. There is an error at the top, while it is trying to save the integration. And what is it? I have not done anything wrong. But let's look at it. It says there are integration attributes enabled for this integration system that are marked as required for launch. OK, but do not have a value assigned to them. So which one is it? Please use a related menu item, Integration System. Configure integration attributes to complete the configuration. So it means that some configuration is spending. And what configuration is that? Core Connector Worker Integration Configuration, the version. Right. It seems that this is a required field in the integration attributes. Right. In integration attributes, it seems there is a required field. So where is the integration attributes if it's crawled out? You see there is a table. It says, integration attributes. OK. And here is something that is marked as required for launch, but we have not entered any value for that. You can, you see it? The Please do like, share, and subscribe to our channel. For more information, contact us at sales at the rateuptalk.com.